So this machine is a top loading sewing machine and what that means is that the bobbin lives in this little section here so you can see it through the little glass window on your sewing machine. It's quite handy because you can see when your bobbin's about to run out um, and it does mean it's much easier to thread than the more traditional front loading machines. So there's nothing unusual about this sewing machine. Yes, it's computerized and yes, it has a digital display. Uh, but all that does is basically replace the traditional dials that you would have on the front of a sewing machine. So I'm going to switch it on and I'm going to show you all of um, the functions and how we're going to thread it. So the hand wheel is here on the right hand side and if you were to turn that towards you, you can see it does make the needle go up and down. There's no need to do that though because you have actually got a needle up and down function here. So you can use the button to do it for you. The really nice thing about these particular sewing machines, this one is the Janome CXL301, is that it has this tortoise and hare function, which means you can slow it right down or have it as fast as it wants to go. And that's really particularly handy if you're letting youngsters use your sewing machine or if you're doing a part of your sewing that's a little bit unusual curve, for instance, and you would want to be able to go nice and slowly to make sure you get round it. So on the top here is our spool pin and that's where we're going to put our thread and the first thing we're going to do is thread up a bobbin. So you need to make sure that when you put your thread onto the machine that the thread is coming out from underneath of the spool. Then you're going to put your end cap on and take your thread around this little silver button here on the top and it will sit in this little groove and hold it nice and snug. So with your bobbin, it's got some little holes on the outside edge here, and what you want to do is take your thread into the side of the bobbin and up out of the hole in the top. A little bit fiddly. There we go. And then you're going to pop your bobbin on top of the bobbin winder, which is the little silver bit here, keeping your thread upright. Now you need to tell your sewing machine that you want it to spin the bobbin, so you're going to push the bobbin to the right and it will come up on the display SP. Now what I normally do is wrap my thread around my finger a couple of times and hang on nice and tightly to it. I don't want to let go of it. I'm going to put my foot on the pedal just briefly. Let it spin up just a tiny bit and then you can let go. And then you can take some scissors and just give it a snip, flush on the top. I'm going to make sure that my machine is at full speed and I'm going to put my foot on the pedal right down to the floor. Now I'm not going to carry on spinning while I talk to you because you won't be able to hear but basically when my thread reaches this plastic part here this bobbin will stop but bear in mind that it will still make I'm spinning a bobbin noises so if you're staring out of the window and not watching what's happening your machine could well burn out so do make sure that you're watching for when this gets full so we'll keep going until it fills up. Coming to a stop now. And you can see it slows right down and comes to a stop, and that's when you need to take your foot off the pedal. So I'm just going to give my thread a little snip and then push my bobbin back to the left and then I can remove it and you can see it's nicely full. You want to make sure that it's firmly wound. If for any reason your thread is loose on the bobbin, then it's not going to be correctly wound and it won't work properly for you. So now I'm gonna show you how to thread the sewing machine, but I'm going to use a nice bright pink thread so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've replaced the thread on the top of my sewing machine with some pink thread. Now it might be worth mentioning to you, if when you're spinning your bobbins up, you're using a reel of thread that's half full like this one is, sometimes it's not quite heavy enough to stay on its spool pin properly and it might bounce off occasionally. It might sort of bounce around like this and start to come off. 
so it's sometimes handy to just keep your hand on here while it's spinning up just gently to stop that happening I tend to find when I'm filling up my bobbins that I try and use a nice full reel of thread um, it's just a, a little thing that the machine tends to like to do which is a little bit annoying um, but you can't really get round so once your thread's on here, and again it's coming out from underneath, you're going to take your thread and you're going to follow all the directional arrows that are actually printed onto your machine, you can see them here. So we're going to take our thread behind this big block of plastic here, so there's a big arrow telling us to go this way, and then it tells us to go down this channel here. It tells us to go up and behind the take-up lever, which is this silver bit here. And as you go behind and come back down, you can see it sits nicely in the top of the take up lever. Then you're going to take it down to number four and hook it behind this hook here. You then have another hook at the top of the needle, which is just there. Now you're quite fortunate with this machine in that it does have a needle threader. If your machine didn't have a needle threader, then you would just thread your needle from the front through to the back. But this one does, so I'll show you how it works. You're going to get a hold of this lever here and pull it down and as you push it away from you it will come and it will sit into the needle. Now what you can't see on the camera is that now in the eye of the needle is a very tiny filament of metal. It's gone through the eye of the needle. So if I take my thread and I pop it under this little tension guide here and across the front of my needle it will now be sitting in that little piece of wire. So I like to say this reminds me of the old Channel 4 logo. So if you try and get yourself a Channel 4 logo, then you should be able to thread your machine. So you're now going to just pull it towards you and release it. And you can see it's left a little loop of thread in the back, which you can get hold of and pull through. And your thread needs to go through the groove in the middle of your presser foot and out the back of your sewing machine. So that's the top of our machine threaded. Sometimes um, it's easy to think of it as a big capital N um, and that tends to be the way that most sewing machines will thread, even the really old dated machines. So now we're going to thread the bobbin, so we're going to just release this little catch here which will pop out our little window. And we're going to take our bobbin. Now you want to make sure that the thread is going in a clockwise direction around your bobbin and you're going to drop it into the bobbin housing. Now there is a tiny little cut just here on the side of your bobbin case and you want to get your thread into that little cut, put your finger on the bobbin to stop it spinning round and just give it a little tug to the left. And what that's done is it's hooked the thread under this little tension guide here and it's holding it nice and tight and snug and in place. Once you've done that you want to get this thread to come up through the bottom of your machine so you do it by holding onto your top thread, don't pull it, just hold onto it, press your needle down button, press it again so it comes back up and in doing so it will sweep that thread up, you can just give it a little gentle tug now and hook it out with your scissors. And what you can see is that the thread is running nice and taut across the bobbin housing. Now it needs to look like that all the time. If when you're sewing your stitches look really loose and baggy, I guarantee if you check in your bobbin housing this piece of thread won't be here and nice and taut and it's just meant that this has jumped loose in its housing. So if you re-thread the bobbin and make sure it's nice and taut, that will eliminate that problem. So you're just going to pop the little window back on and now your threads want to be at the back of the machine and you're ready to start sewing. If you like to stop and smell the 